Hey YouTube, it's Jordan again with a helpful video on how to replace the audio cable on your SL1200 turntable. I see a lot of uh, machines come in here where people have replaced the cable with something horribly inadequate in the sense that it's too large, doesn't fit in the strain relief, blah blah blah. Uh, as another one of those machines comes in, I'll cover how to deal with the broken or missing strain relief if you don't want to pay the uh, $15 for the original Technics part. It's up to you. Uh, there's plenty of ways to do it without that, and I'll show you when I get more of those sets in. Anyways, we're going to proceed with taking this one apart, and I'll show you how to do the cable. First thing I do is I get it on a sandbag so that the toner arm isn't squished down on my bench, therefore not injuring the top bearing. What you'll need is a number two Phillips screwdriver. Uh, if you'd like a drill, with a number two bit on it is really helpful. You'll need a 50 watt soldering iron. Yes, 50 watt, not the 30 watt Radio Shack. Don't do that. You could probably do it with a 40, uh, but 50 is recommended. Some good 60-40 uh, solder, uh, maybe a millimeter, that's a good size, and uh, some dexterity and patience. So we'll get cracking. So I'm going to start by taking all the screws out and then having a power tool is very useful here in cutting down the amount of time also a box to put all the screws in Okay, when you get all the screws out, you should be able to wiggle and jiggle the bottom cover off, like so. Pull your cables out through it. And that exposes the bottom part of the deck. Now some old SL1200s, you don't have to do that and they'll have this entire plate exposed here in which case obviously you can skip those initial steps it really just depends on what uh, SL1200 you have oh one more tool you'll need is a tiny small screwdriver like flat blade like this and that's to get the strain relief separated from each other which I'll show you in a second so get your number two Phillips and release the screws for the strain relief and then release the two screws that hold the plate now to get the strain relief apart Take your screwdriver, and I'm going to try to get the camera here so you can see it better. If it will stay quick for me. Nope, it's not going to do that. Hang on a second. All right, so take your flat bladed screwdriver and pry here underneath this lip. Without stabbing yourself, and the two pieces will separate. And remember that this goes on the bottom like this underneath the cable and the top part like this clamps over top. Okay, so now that you've got that off, pull the plate out. 
and this is going to expose what we're trying to get at, which is the contact plate. And I'm just feeding the, uh, the cables through here so we can get them out of the way. Now you have to decide whether you want to keep your ground wire or not. Uh, if you're in a hi-fi sense, it's a good idea to keep it. If not, it doesn't matter. I personally find it to be a little less hum to uh, unify the ground or internally ground it, however you want to call it. So we're just, that's what we're going to end up doing. So first of all, cut away the old zip tie that's holding the cable down and then with your 50 watt soldering iron heat the solder and break the cable loose And that just comes right out. Then what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of solder, not much, just to make it nice and clean. And I'll also add solder to here, which is where our ground unification strap is going to go. Now you can do the unified ground with a strap, uh, like an old piece of lead from a wire, which is what I use. All these little lead pieces I clip off of things that I replace. Or you can use a piece of wire. But what you're doing is you're connecting the negatives here and here to the chassis ground here. You're just jumpering them all together. And that's unifying the ground system. In uh, most cases, the chassis ground of a hi-fi receiver is this, at signal ground potential anyways, so why have a third wire to go down that will cause a ground loop? And as you can see, this is the mock-up of how it's going to work. If I can get this in here, the soldering kind of makes it a little difficult. That's kind of how it's going to work just like that. So we'll solder that in place and then we'll replace our cable. And this is where it's going to bounce around on me. It's not exactly what I wanted. Let's see if we can correct that a little bit. Alright, so we got the middle one soldered. And we'll get the two negatives of the signal soldered. Place the cable and the cable I like to use is this MCM cable here part number 24-12492 reason why is it's really well made really well shielded and it's cheap it's only about five bucks so what we're going to do Go ahead and cut the ends off, like so. And I'm going to strip back about a half an inch. Make sure to use really good wire cutters so you don't kill the coax too. But there you go, that's how it looks there. And then we're going to separate the uh, pieces. And separate the coax from the signal and on these you want the uh, coax to be at the outside All right. 
right almost there so that's kind of how it looks there and then I'm going to strip off about maybe uh, two millimeters off of the signal leads and twist them up now you don't want all the wires to be the same length because of the way that the uh, pads are staggered there's uh, there's that okay so what we're actually going to do is you're going to cut down the ground shield about that much I'm going to cut it away from this work area so we don't get any shavings inside so that's about how it's going to look something like that and that's so that it can connect to all the different points there then we're going to tin our leads so that they'll stick to the solder pads nice and easy and the key to having the 50 watt iron here is to have lots of heat for a very short amount of time because if you heat the coax too much the insulation will melt on the center conductor and they will short together and then you'll have to cut it back and try again so I'm going to attach the hot lead first on the right side just like that give it a little tug make sure it's there do the same for the left side that's what I've done so far there just so you can try to kinda of see that I know my hands kind of in the way and we'll do the left side again that's how that is and then I will attach the grounds to the shorting bar that we installed to unify the ground and again or the left side and there you have it so the cables in there are nice and snug and it's all unified what you might wish to do just to check your work is to make sure that you didn't heat up the cable you don't want to heat up the cable too much so we're going to zoom out a little and make sure that there's no short circuit between plus and minus and there doesn't appear to be so we did good there next thing you need to do is reinstall the zip tie that used to be there that we cut out in order to uh, remove the cable and the best way to feed that in is underneath the cable around that little notch there in the circuit board. Grab it with a pair of pliers. Tie your zip tie down. Cut your excess. And since we're doing the internal ground mod, I'm going to clip the old ground wire off down here at its terminal. Being careful not to sever anything else. Alright. So now what we're going to do is put our connector plate back on. This is the orientation in which it goes. and we're going to feed the cable through it I do one RCA at a time so that it fits pull the cable through and we're going to push that down We're going to get our screwdriver again and secure the plate. I'm going to magnetize my screwdriver. Oops, 
one. And here's two. We'll reinstall our strain relief. Snap them together and secure them with the screws. Now I've got other work to do on this turntable so I'm not going to fully reassemble it right now. But there you go. That is SL1200 cable replacement in a nutshell. And just uh, feed the cables through the back cover. Audio goes there, power goes there. Yeah, I know the floor is a mess. Cleaning's tomorrow. But that's how you do it. And that's how you do it competently with the internal ground. So uh, don't use a giant cable. I showed you the MCM part, which is excellent signal quality. It's not cheaply made, but it is affordable and it sounds good and it's easy to install and you can still use the original strain relief. So just uh, reinsert your cables and put your cover back on like you took it off. Most important thing is, is the very corner screws that are next to the feet. Don't use a drill to put these in. The aluminum bosses here are really soft and you'll strip them out. So just put them in with a screwdriver and just kind of finger tighten it down. That's not crucial that they be tight. Anyway, I uh, hope this video was useful to you. More stuff to come soon.